Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop for 10 more action pack minutes of F-16 fixing action. <laughs> Hit you with a surprise this morning, didn't I? No, I didn't crash it, but I did have to do some repairing it after Waco. I'm going to tell you all out about it. We sure had a blast down there, but first things first, I'm going to share something with you guys. Okay, y'all know we took the bomber down there, and uh, Friday, newspaper guy showed up. Took some pictures of me and Butch standing by the bomber, put a little story in there about Bob Moore, Wichita, Kansas, and Butch Sickles of Mansfield. Look over the six-scale remote radio control B-1 bomber they designed and built on display Friday at the Southwest Jet Rally. And it goes on some more, but they went in town. Seen that picture in the paper. <laughs> so where y'all think they came Saturday? Oh yeah, they had to see the bar. And everyone at the front desk, or at the front gate, asked, was asking if the bomber was still there. Was the bomber still there? They was telling me this Sunday or Saturday. And they said, yeah. So everyone in town had to come out and see the bomber. So I won People's Choice. Still in the plastic, ain't even took it out yet. But uh, that's cool. But we sure had a good time down there. Yeah, it'd take me a few days off, man. We're gonna hang that up on the wall. Right next to my Bomber Field, B Big Bird Fly In B-17 Gathering in 1994. Oh yeah, it took a 100 inch P-38 down there. That was a scale 100 inch P-38. And won second place in uh, military multi-engine. Think about it, military multi-engine at the B-17 gathering. Tell me that wasn't one nice P-38 I built a long time ago. Flew that plane hard for nine years before, I mean for three years before its demise. But it was a kit. But boy, it was pretty. It was pretty. But anyway, back to the F-16. Okay, what happened? It was hot out there, people. It was, that was some hot old Texas sun. Heat index Saturday, 114 in the shade. <laughs> and they just got, <clears throat> they just got all that rain, you know, from that hurricane. So it was all real humid. And man, you couldn't even hardly breathe. But uh, this thing was sitting in the sun all weekend and uh, took its toll on the dang airlines. Saturday, this, I flew it Friday. Yeah, because it was Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We got there Thursday night. I flew it fr Friday a couple times. Everything was fine. I flew it Saturday and phew, Air leaks, air leaks, air leaks, air leaks. It was so hot. It only happened to this orange, okay? But it, it uh, blistered up and it looked like a aneurysm in a blood vein. It got real fat right there and uh, blew it up, bam, in three places. And it had to have happened all at the same time. But, uh, Air started leaking, started leaking, started leaking, you know. It was a bummer. <laughs> a couple of them were easy to get to, the big ones. Here, let me flip this over, I'll show you. first and I want it fixed right you know me I got to get this thing put away ready to fly I can't put it away I need work Boy, in case I got to go somewhere but these lines right here okay these are the ones that split bam right here and you know and uh, one up here on the nose gear but that's I'm gonna get to that in a minute but I found these two big ones down here I fixed them 
and uh, it happened to be right there pretty close to them uh, these uh, air restrictors that you know they put in the lines from the factory and uh, so I was able to splice them in and I had a couple more I couldn't find but they was real slow ones I really didn't worry about it because they were so slow they take you know 15 minutes and they'd still have they'd go from a hundred seemed like they'd go to from a hundred to sixty pounds and quit you know my fail safes on fifty pounds so you know and that usually works it fifty pounds usually works it fine and it does except for the one exception okay that this line right here go into the air cylinder that locks it there's actually little tiny air cylinders right here that's why I really like these landing gear because they actually have a little tiny air cylinder that locks it see that is a positive lock okay but uh, without air it also split right there right there where it plugs in and he couldn't see it and once it got down to 60 pounds it would stop but you put a hundred in it and you can hear a little heat hiss and I never did find that out there so when I put my gear out they would go down to about right there just short of locking because the air was leaking out and wasn't going into the cylinder so therefore when I landed bam jacked up that gear door pretty good but uh, didn't touch this at all okay jacked up that gear door good I happen to have another one this was my original gear door right after I test flew it slammed it on something and got a crack so I ordered another one and that was this one <laughs> it got jacked pretty good it actually collapsed on me twice I thought I got it fixed because I found another air leak I found another one of them and I uh, thought it was fixed you know and I figured oh the damage is done <laughs> so that's why I have some fun if it locks it locks <laughs> but uh, that's why right there because this gear has always worked flawlessly positive lock see but when you're flying and there's pressure against it it needs that air to actually physically lock it so that's the problem my buddy had with his fly eagle it wouldn't lock you know but uh that's what happened the result that gear door and another place it scraped was the nose it jacked this nose up I actually put a big old hole in it right there big one man because the first one I wasn't going very fast it really just kind of scratched it up a little second time I landed I was going pretty good and it skidded long little ways <laughs> jacked that nose but I guess there's a couple ways you can fix that you can order that whole piece Okay, because that all just unbolts, people. This one unbolts, too. It's really pretty cool. And uh, so you can order that whole piece, which is, you know, a little pricey. Or I guess they sell a nose where you can cut that nose off and attach another nose. But then, you know, you got a seam right there, and it just... So I just decided I put, like, four layers of fiberglass cloth on here, that 10-ounce. It's right on top of the flat spot. But I wanted to build it up high enough where I could sand it and get my contour without a lot of bondo. Plus, I've got a super hard finish now. Now I'm going to take me some of my vinyl tape and tape me a little piece of aluminum right there. Because that's where it scrapes. If it ever happens again, I, it'll, all you got to do is change out that pad. Rather, because that's the only place it hits, that in the gear to work gear door is only like six bucks that ain't bad to order but that nose is kind of pricey so that's what I'm going to do but it's fixed all I got to do is bolt my nose back on it and put it back together I was going to show you how I found all them airlines air leaks I need to show you I'll make another movie all right so sit back watching Bob TV because we're going to be right back same Bob time, same Bob station. This episode of Bob TV was broadcasted in Philovision. This is a drama-free zone. <laughs>